Hey gang, what's going on? Welcome back to the show. It is Cobra Kai Season 2, Episode 8, Glory of Love, and we have a special guest in studio with us, Mary Mauser. We'll see you guys in one second. You're tuned in to AfterBuzz TV, the ESPN of TV talk. Now, let the buzz begin. Holy moly! I know! We're back! Welcome, Woo! Molly. Woo! This is exciting. I can't believe you're here. I just Yay! watched hours and hours of you on the show. This is so cool. You must be exhausted. <laughs> As I said, the, uh, I've never roller skated before, so this episode was, you know, very exhausting. <laughs> there was, like, a literal separate training session for this episode, for, like, us. Like, so they, no stunt doubles were used for this. Uh, stunt doubles were around. They were, uh, I was like, Julia, can you just hold my hand? Um, no, literally, like, we had, you know, all this training going into the show. It was all this, like, martial arts stuff, and then, like, by the time we're, like, a couple weeks in, they're like, hey, everybody knows how to roller skate, right? And we're like, uh huh, yeah, sure. <laughs> and every one of us, other than Tanner, was like, uh huh. Tanner, who plays Robbie, was just like, yeah, cool, whatever. And uh, and so we got a whole separate training two weekends for this. Wow. Well, is roller skating not something that's still. No. I but... cannot, so. <laughs> no. I don't know. Really? Either. That was like a huge Friday night. Was there more no. roller skating training than there was karate training? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> it might have been it more was, dangerous. It was pretty intense. Actually, the, the director of, of uh, 7 and 8, um, she was super awesome. She was uh, directed on season 1 as well. And she was, she heard that I was horrible at roller skating. And she was like, I got you. So she she actually took me the first oh, time. Nice. And she was like, let's go. We'll talk about the episode. We'll talk about the character. You know, where you feel like you are at like with all this stuff. And, and while we do it, we'll roller skate. And I forgot that I put the locker key in my back pocket. I fell so many times, and then I the other then a few days later, I think I was trying on like a bathing suit for an episode or something. And I was like, "What the heck happened?" I had a big, big black and blue bruise on oh, my from the no. key. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> so uh, I think I came out probably more beat up from the <laughs> from the roller skating than I did the karate. That's wow. awesome. Well, there's a lot to talk about in this episode. Uh, we are gonna we want to pick your brain about all the things that happened. But it's episode eight. There's a there's some big stuff going on. Johnny, his relationship with Carmen. We want to talk about that a little bit. You know, his super sweet white snake dream that the episode starts. <laughs> oh, yeah, my living I word. Shipped them so that hard. was everything. Yeah, there's uh, Daniel and his relationship with Amanda. He's trying to repair mm -hmm. that. Obviously, it's not going well after what's happened with uh, missing the meeting. Yeah. You got Sam's relationship with Robbie, which we're super excited to talk to you about. <laughs> and then, of course, uh, Johnny wanting to really kind of update what's going on with Cobra Kai, the tone. He really mm -hmm. wants to take it back into his hands with the departure of Kree. So there's a, a huge amount of stuff to cover. And I think let's just uh, let's just jump straight in with the Sam relationship with Robbie, because I think. Oh, yeah, yeah. that's the... this has been here, there and everywhere this season. And we're all wondering just kind of where it's going to go. Yeah. yeah. I, I mean, yeah. Go. Oh, please go ahead. No, no. Uh, any go. You. I. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I have I'm plenty of things I could say, but then I feel like at the same time, it's like I. I. Uh, to me, it was so normal. It was like after last season, I. We all sit around and make predictions in our head, and I'm yeah. like, okay, so like, they can't do like Miguel and Sam too soon. So it'll probably be Robbie. <laughs> but like, do I like him? Does he like me? Like, where is that gonna go? And so like, we had all these like <laughs> predictions that we made at the end of last year, and then going into this year, I think. It was weird because, like, going into for season one, when I did my audition, I knew. I met Sholo, and I was like, I'm going to have to kiss you at some point. And I was, like, in my mind. <laughs> and, yeah. and it was, like, normal in that way, you know, in a way that, like, kissing a total stranger is normal. But, like, it was it was something I kind of, like, knew going into the relationship. Whereas with Tanner, I had a whole year of friendship. And then going into this season, I was kind of like, this is going to be weird. That's weird. Like, <laughs> awkward. Yeah. You had that scene, like, this is awkward. Yes, yeah, yeah, no, exactly. <laughs> but no, it was actually super fun because he and I were just like best friends. We hung out all the time. So I felt like it was very like natural yeah. the way that it, it felt. But uh, I'm so curious to know what other people's reactions were because the whole time we're filming it, we're like, are people going to hate it? Are people going to love it? Like, I know there's so many teams, Sam and Miguel's, and then there's going to be, I feel like, people who kind of see this new like other side to her that maybe this is kind of more of a better place for her i don't know so mm. have people reacted on twitter i mean have you, are you following or people say like oh i'm team miguel oh i'm team robbie yes yeah no i've definitely i've uh, last year i mean it was literally like everything in my off season was a message at least three messages a day saying sam and miguel question <laughs> mark sam and miguel question mark and i i obviously couldn't answer anything so i'm just like <laughs> sitting here like mm, please don't be mad at me um and then now now that season two's come out i've been like i've seen a few like oh okay i see where this is mm -hmm. going like okay never mind i changed my mind now it's robbie their styles are so different i thought it was interesting when we were there uh, at the paley event with you the other mm -hmm. night i loved i loved what they wore to the event yeah you know, yes. tanner is <laughs> in the bright red suit and he's got the fedora he's got the yeah. style yeah. down solo's in like way way more of like a uh just like a 
I even asked him about it. He just like looked like a bro. He looked yes. like cool. He was yeah, like, yeah, super yeah. casual. He said, I have no styling sense. Like I rely on my buddies to actually Aww. put this together for me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, they're they're both awesome. But the, I, totally just like in the show, they are completely different people. Yeah. Which was interesting, I guess, to kind of I imagine where how Samantha would go from one to the other at such kind of like polar extremes. But I feel like that's kind of where she's going like she at the beginning of the season is just in a place of like I need to cleanse from what I went through and kind of similar to Miguel and where he's going with Tori it's like this polar opposite of what they had originally mm -hmm. so I feel like I it for me like made sense that she would start to develop feelings for Robbie also like Aisha says and I think episode three or whatever like you're just you and abs out there like training in the hot sun all day like, like, oh, like, that was a great no line. argument there yeah, I, mean. right? I love Mary that you brought up like this is like Sam needs to cleanse this summer from everything that she just went through because we have talked on this show about kind of what was her motivation for wanting to pick up karate again because obviously all the kids in Cobra Kai kind of have a background of being bullied and want to stand up for themselves. Sam's background isn't exactly that. So I guess it, it is kind of just, you would, would you say, uh, just trying to forget everything take yeah. everything in her own hands. I feel like I feel like, you know, I've talked before about how I imagine that when Sam was younger and like we all know she practiced karate when she was a kid and like how when you're younger the lessons you learn from a parent from her parents like don't sink in quite the same or like mean quite as much because you're a kid and it's like yeah yeah sure like kids are mean and like it's important to stay true to yourself sure. But like <laughs> then when you like become a teenager you're like oh like maybe that actually is like means something and it's more important and kind of like how she would realize at the end of last season that the people she was hanging out with maybe aren't the people she wants to be like aligning herself with and then that you know this guy who broke her heart he represents all that Cobra Kai is to her now and you know even though her best friend is also there like she doesn't know where she stands with all that so like that she would go back to her dad and his style of karate rather than joining Cobra Kai or rather than going back to what we imagine she did in her off time like gymnastics or ballet or whatever else she did to keep active you know like that she would go back to those lessons that maybe she didn't quite understand the first time, but now she realizes that there's something there that could apply to her now. Do you have gymnastics background a little bit? I don't. Tanner does. Tanner does. Yes. Oh, Tan oh yes. Okay. Gymnastics, rollerblading. Wow. Oh, what else? Dude, you have no idea. <laughs> oh Us my in gosh. training is freaking hilarious. Like, there's Sholo who's over here. Like, he just goes hard. He goes hard. He works hard. The four of us trained together. It was Sholo, Tanner, Jacob, and I um, for, like, the month before we went and then for the two weeks there. And, you know, Sholo just goes super hard. Jacob's just goofing off, having a great time, like, doing whatever he can do, trying to learn how to do these backflips and just, oh, my gosh knocking himself out on the floor it was so funny and then and then there's tanner who's just like effortlessly like oh you want to see me do an aerial sure no problem uh, do you want to see me do like a back mm, okay fine um and yeah he's, he's just like everything's like super easy for him and then there's me who's over there like sweating with all of my hair and a mop on top of my head just like i will get through this i, will, I believe in myself for your character i think th this episode changed because I always thought, you know, especially in the first seven episodes, that you were going to be the go-between between, between Cobra Kai and Miyagi, and you were going to help bring things. You're like, well, they're not all bad. I think was what you were mm -hmm. saying earlier. And this see this episode, I think, in in addition to the last one, you, when Tori comes in, kind of changes that, and you really dig into just being Miyagi. Yeah. I, well, I feel like that like that moment when when uh, Robbie and Sam walk into. Um, the roller rink and, mm -hmm, we see, mm -hmm. and we see I see Miguel and yeah. it's like oh you two know each other this girl who's like been awful and I feel that she's stealing away my best friend who we were supposed to reconnect at this point like why you know and she's defending her instead of coming to me and like all this stuff and and now, of course, my ex-boyfriend now is dating this girl. And, of course, she's in Cobra Kai. Like, that makes <laughs> perfect sense. And then I feel like that's kind of, like, the moment where for me, like, with Samantha, that it changes into, you know, you know what? Like, there is something going on here. There's something more. And I feel like also just emotionally, like, you can't always stay in check. I feel like Samantha does a pretty good job of, of being pretty logical even though she gets caught up in her emotions she starts trying she's thinking forward and she's trying to figure it out and she's like okay i'm heartbroken but i'm not just going to sit around and be heartbroken i'm going to challenge myself and go back and you know and she's like thinking ahead of herself but in that moment i feel like it's just like okay of course and then at the end of her beautiful date night you know tori ruins it for her and that's like you know i feel like just that kind of is the beginning of the the downfall of like let's be fair there was one line that you said where i really felt bad for miguel when you, when he confronted you and you were like it's not a date and it's oh. like oh, oh that is exactly how you played miguel and he knew it i it's... felt horrible as i was even saying that i was like and i didn't realize at first when i was reading the script i was like it's not a date 
<gasps> and I was like, oh, oh, Samantha, you need to check yourself. You need to go home. You need to. <laughs> this is not fair. Well, I was surprised, actually, in that scene at the roller rink, because there's, there's a couple things that we realize and a couple lessons we get. But I was surprised that Miguel's reaction to seeing the two of them together was as, like, mellow as it was there actually because i feel like he i almost feel like he would have freaked out but i guess now he's got tori so i mean mm -hmm. that that whole entire the four of them uh, and then the other part of it that was so interesting is that she trips her but then she reacts and then you guys get in trouble yeah. right which is like such the lesson of miyagi do versus cobra kai mm -hmm. you know it's like if you react and you react angrily mm -hmm. then you're gonna be the one that gets That's thrown true. out right yeah and peyton's little smile at the end just ooh, like she's so nice in person but <laughs> man when she gave me that smile i was like oh i could fight you right I now know. No. <laughs> it was interesting because tori deserved it you know when she slammed you yeah. and then you tripped her i'm like yes yeah, sam i know it's wrong but good for you yeah yeah, yeah, yeah no sure. i mean i also the french fries flying that was what i felt bad about i was like no wasted fries <laughs> <laughs> now, on the flip side of it, your parents are in the show are having a bit of a tough patch. And, um, you know, Daniel's trying to do everything that he can to fix it uh, with Amanda. Now, one of the things that I think is really funny, anytime you have a show that's based in L.A., uh, and those of us that live in L.A., you relate to the things. Like, Sugarfish is my favorite sushi. <laughs> yes, Sugarfish funny. is, yes. like, the top of the top. Yes. I love it. I'm obsessed with it. Like, I look forward to it anytime I ever get to go to that place. You uh -huh. know, we mentioned Jones on 3rd. Like, it's just funny. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And he says, you know, I went over the I went over the hill. And it's like, we relate to that stuff. Yes. You know what it actually means oh, to do totally. that to someone. I know. I love that. I love it. And even in season one, there's that like shot where Johnny's driving and there's a sign that says like "Welcome to Encino." I'm like, yeah. that's right where like the Habit Burger I go to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. That's so funny. But mm -hmm. so yeah, he tries to do everything that he can. Daniel does to get her back. He, you know, he's bringing the kids in to help clean. He's, uh, he, I mean, honestly, he's he's going back to the old memory and it. This feels like a this feels like a TV moment, right? Mm -hmm. It's like yeah. it's an arc. You need to show this mm -hmm. in the episode. He needs to get her back. He needs to show that effort. But he's still not totally making it happen. He's still not completely like it's band-aiding the situation. And she makes the right. comment. It's a head wound. It's putting a band-aid mm -hmm. on a head wound. Yeah. Great line. Yeah. Our marriage is a head wound. Open head wound. Yeah. yeah. I know. Yeah. Oh, that got me. Yeah. I mean, like the. I feel like I love Courtney so much. Who plays Amanda? I think she's amazing. I like. I've I've seen people compare her to Miyagi, and I think that's so true that she's like Daniel's center. You know, she yes. she checks him like constantly, and she's like, you know. But in her way, it's not the like wisdoms that she gives, but it's these the wisdoms wrapped up in this like little sarcastic bow, and she just like gives him a little a little check every once in a while, and like I love that, and definitely like it was hard for me as their fake kid, but also as like a viewer to like watch their relationship mm. this season, and I felt like. That moment, like at the in the car, and when they, you know, when he tries his best, and you're right, like it doesn't fully fix the problem. The problem is still he's splitting his time. The problem is still he's his mind is not just on his relationship and his family, where and his business where it was a year ago. Now he's so caught up in this Cobra Kai world, and I feel like that definitely comes back. Like he 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 doesn't necessarily band aid it. I feel like he does better than band aid it by the end. You know, when they have that moment in the car, mm -hmm. I feel like that's more than a band aid. But at the same time, we see in like nine and ten, and the tensions between them still that it doesn't necessarily make it go at all away. And we'll talk about that a little bit more because obviously there is more to talk about there. Um, so, but on the flip side of it, the other relationship in the show is the one that the episode opens with, which is such a such a hilarious moment, such a great that sequence. Scene. It was, it was I could cool. watch that opening. Yeah. A million times. Yes. Johnny and he's imagining Carmen and it's like a throwback to the old White Snake videos with I think like Tawny Katan on the car from back in the right. day. Right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Right. Like there's the old White Snake videos with David Coverdale and he's totally it's it is the White Snake song and he's just like he look on his face as he's sleeping. Yes. He's the oh, so good. So good. Where she's pouring cores in his mouth. Yeah. yeah. Just those moments were hysterical. I, I loved, I remember when everybody was like talking about this, like, oh, we're filming, we're filming the dream sequence today. We're filming the dream sequence today. And I was like, dang it, I was on another unit. I didn't get to see it happen. But I just thought it was so funny, the like, the like gi, the like, her like black robe yes. or whatever that like ma mimicked like a gi and then like training. I thought it was so funny. Mm -hmm. And then she like, she like throws her leg up next to his head, I think at yeah. one point. Oh, yeah. And I was like, you go girl. Like, yes. <laughs> his karate can be hot. Thank you. Well, there's like a lot. I mean, they they that's just like a real love letter by the by mm -hmm. the, the creators of the show, and and they talk about how much love they have for like Back to the Future Two and these or old the movies 80s. from the eighties. Yeah. And this is a very very clear throwback to all these music videos, and it's just part of the culture. Bring them that's back. Bring them so back. Funny. 
Um, but yeah, it's 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 really great. And so then we start talking about Johnny and his love life and this this app culture. And you, you, what do you <laughs> what do you like? What do you like? Oh my god! <laughs> the, the, Why? All his little ni- names that he comes up with for things like yeah. your this is Johnny Lawrence's smartphone. Yeah. Like I'm like just like oh it's cringe, but it's so good. <laughs> but he's on the date and she and he's like you can read your email on your smartwatch. He's like yeah I read mine on my smart. Phone. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's so good. That's amazing. Mm. Um, but yeah, so and and him on the dates, it's it's great. And he's like, so what do you what do you like, Johnny? What are you looking for? And he's like, uh, muscle cars, Iron <laughs> Eagle one and two. Oh, <laughs> good, that's enough. Send yeah. it to the internet. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I love the uh, when it, when she when the lady that he's date like the first I think it's the first like date that he goes on and she's like, yeah, I have two kids, blah blah. blah. And he's like, yeah, I work with kids all the time. And she's like, that's amazing, <laughs> like that's so great. And he's like, yeah, one time like this kid was like goofing off. Or I was on his phone or whatever. And she's like, oh, I know. How that is kind of thing. And he's like, yeah, I just like, did a flying elbow. <laughs> and like, fix that problem. And I'm just like, oh my God, that uh. so is how he would parent. Like... So as he's as he's doing this thing and he's on these dates, there's one really interesting thing that happens, and he's looking up Allie. And they've now teased Allie a couple times. Mm-hmm. Um, and he sends her Accidentally. Accidentally. Yeah, the worst message. Because he decides it's not a good idea. <laughs> Sends yeah. her a desperate message that he deems desperate himself yes. before sending it. Yeah. Um, but it sets up, you know, we haven't seen Elizabeth Shue in the show yet. Mm-hmm. Um, and we may or may not, but this is definitely a moment. And you see that thing happen as, as the girl bumps into him, and you just go, oh, I want to know more right yeah. now. Yeah. I need to know more of what's happening. Even I, the viewer, I, like a lot of times, like we were shooting back to back, like we were shooting. Uh, on the, by the time we reached the end, we were shooting like three units on one day. Like it was insanity. Wow. Like just getting everything crammed in because you know they wanted bigger and better this year. We got the same timeline, so we're doing bigger and better as to the best we our ability. But there were days where I mean, I'm we we're over on the Miyagi unit and there's the Cobra Kai unit. It was almost literally divided between dojos like the whole season. It was kind of like you know we would work. At, there was rarely any crossover other than like you know the the roller rink and stuff like that. Like there was rarely any crossover. So uh, there was plenty of stuff that I didn't get to see how it finally came out until the show aired. And right. I d- I refused to watch anything with a watermark, so I didn't see it before the day that it dropped like I watched it live with everyone else and uh, and there were moments like that where I was just like oh, what and I was thinking to myself I was like do I go back to my scripts right now and like see where this goes or do I just like wait and let it play mm. out and I, I did I just like I waited and let it play out so like there were aspects like that where I was a viewer I was sitting there I was like oh, no oh my god <laughs> imagine and my boyfriend's like what do you mean imagine like this is your show like what you should not <laughs> That's so cool. That's a, it's so great that you're such a fan of it because it is a great show. Um, so so anyway, this this thing happens. He sends it, but while well, at the same time he's at the bar, Johnny he sees Graham. Oh my oh gosh! Ooh. And I wasn't what? expecting that moment. I kind of was. Oh no! I kinda, well, I kind of was in the sense that it's like okay, we they've been teasing this relationship between Johnny and Carmen for a while now, yeah. and then all of a sudden she meets this guy. How convenient that now she's unavailable. So I felt like something kind of what we were talking about uh, last episode where Robbie gets the Medal of Honor back but doesn't give it to mm-hmm. Sam, kind of setting it up for, you know, a way f- an easy out so mm-hmm. that this relationship can I didn't think it w- I didn't think it would be that fast, though. Yeah. I didn't think I it think would be the same more. episode start end. I'm glad it was, because like I said, I ship, I ship uh, the two of them. I ship yeah. the, the Johnny Hard. and, uh, and uh, Miguel Small. Jarman, like, yeah. Carmen. Yes, Jarman, yes. yes. Jarman. Oh, that sounds, uh, that's, I don't know if that's a great Car- ship Car- name. Carmy? Carney? 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 Go back to Jarman. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, so I love I love when he first meets Graham. She's like, this is Graham. Isn't he funny? He's like, yeah. Yes. <laughs> he just yes. like mumbles. Johnny's reactions to everything. Like, I feel like Billy Zabka is just so incredible in the way that he does this role. It's like he's taken this like absolute villain, mm-hmm. quote unquote, yeah. and now we see all these different dimensions and layers. But he still has these little things, these moments where you're just like, "That's that kid who like who like bullied Daniel as a kid." Like that. That's so like it's yeah. so honest and true to who he is. And I feel like he's just he's no good at like covering up and faking it. He's no good at like pretending. He's like, "I don't dance. Like I don't do this <laughs> stuff." Like he's just like everything is just so like honestly Johnny. And that's one of those moments like I I died laughing. Yeah. How do, so this is a question because we've talked about the PC-ness of this show, the political correctness, and how it, it almost is like swinging the pendulum back a little bit with Johnny's character and obviously with Kreese. How do you see that? And how does like your boyfriend see that? And other people look at that and are do you react negatively to that or do you see what they're doing? I see what they're doing. I mean, for me personally, like I, 
I believe that there are so many issues that need to be addressed right now. There are so many things that we need to figure out in the way that we handle things, especially publicly, publicly on TV and stuff like that, because that's that's where we get a lot of our opinions and a lot of our information. So I think those those the pendulum going the other way is so important, but I feel like it's also fun in a way to like check yourself and like it's mm-hmm. satirical in a little way to just be like, that's like there are still people who just call everyone you know yeah things i, yeah. I don't know yeah. what i'm allowed to say yeah but yeah. yeah exactly <laughs> In, inappropriate names yes inappropriate names things that we like nowadays are like stay away from and are so taboo and it's almost fun to kind of like mess around with that i don't find it offensive at all because i know that it's all for the the spirit of staying true to the character and if mm-hmm. would anyone really like cobra kai as much if we didn't have like the honesty of the characters being who they are, like that is who Johnny is. Like he yeah. says awful things. He has these awful opinions. Like the the moment when he like picks up the phone, he's like, "Yeah, we accept boys and girls." And then he's like, "What gender? What gender? Like is what? this a yeah, joke?" Yeah. <laughs> like I'm like, I don't find that offensive, even though yeah. I am like very much like an activist in many of those things. Like I believe in these in these causes, but I don't think of that as offensive for me. I think of that as an honest take at the way that that generation looks at that those you know those new things that are coming about mm-hmm. and these issues that we're addressing comedy is all about pushing boundaries and that's what you hear every stand-up mm-hmm. comedian say that's why that's why some stand-ups come under fire for being politically incorrect and others don't yeah. some say they don't care i mean that's you if you want to write humor and you want to write humor you have to write honest like and honest right. honesty is the funniest so speaking of johnny and kind of trying to reform a little bit and who he's going to be um he does have to break the news here to the dojo that crease is gone and they don't see it coming. And he says, Sensei Kreese is no longer going to be with us. Things aren't black and white. I really loved this moment. I, I think when he says, because it's just that's just paint on a wall, but you got to, you got to, uh, in real life, things are gray. Mm-hmm. You got to learn to use your head. I thought that was great. Like he's, I keep saying it, but he feels like such a fully formed character, Johnny does. Yeah. And, and I'm so happy. I'm so happy to see. Uh, what's happening with this character? Because I'm just, I've just totally bought in. So I do want to kind of know at this eight episodes into the show, where yeah. each person is in terms of the character they're the most invested in. Before I do, really quickly, I want to remind everybody here: we are the ESPN of TV talk. AfterBuzz TV provides an after show for just about every single show on television. So we've got like 12 different YouTube verticals. Each one, one services drama, one services uh, red carpet events. You know, we just did the interviews with Mary this week at Paley Center. You can see those interviews up on the red carpet channel. Um, we have that. So like, comment, subscribe, and of course leave a review on iTunes. Five stars preferably. It's, it's how we continue to stay high in the standings and provide free content for you, the listeners and the watchers. Who are you guys rooting for right now? Eight episodes in, who's the story that you're most invested in? I think I'm full on Team Johnny. Yeah. I think with the yeah. way that he kicked Crease out, he actually spoke it and to his students and said, "No, we're changing." I, I think I'm I'm fully Team Johnny. I'm gonna jump in and say, <laughs> not surprising. <laughs> <laughs> ah, there it is. Um, I totally agree. This is this was the episode where I was, and I had really been on the Johnny train for a while, but mm-hmm. I had gone to Miguel at one point. But this episode was just like, I'm so hyped on Johnny Lawrence. I love what he says to the students at the end of the episode. It really makes me want to see him win. Um, so, yeah, I'm Johnny. Even with the reference yeah. of you got to use your head. Yeah. Yeah. It's great. I'm going to have to go with Sam. And I think I said this to you at the carpet, you know, at the end of season one, when you stepped into your girl power, or we could see that arc was going to start happening. I'm so invested in your story with Miguel and your story with Robbie and Tori. I'm loving every second of it. I appreciate it. <laughs> I would definitely agree with everyone, you two, basically saying Johnny. Yeah. Because I just love the moments. Like, we finally get this this uh, speech of how, yes, this is how he wants to train the new Cobra Kai. This is the... This is him forming the, they're not the bad guys, as Sam kind of pointed it out. And I love that, because it's been frustrating, kind of the back and forth of, you know, people thinking that they're terrible, and them being like, we we just, you know, we're strong, and we have our issues, but we're not the bad guys. And I love that I feel like now Johnny's, it's really starting to come together, that they're just their own unit. And Mary, when you're watching this, and you, because you, like you said, you didn't watch it until it aired. You get eight <laughs> episodes in. Where are you with the story? Like, who are you behind the most? Um, honestly, in this episode specifically, I think I like Team Amanda. Yeah. Because I, I feel like mm, she does yeah. such like a she. It's like it's just like a reality check in this world of like warring dojos and all this drama about karate and all the stuff that like is fun to like watch and stuff like that. It's a reminder that in real life, like, there's so there, you have to focus on more things than just the thing that you're angry about, the thing you're passionate about, the thing that, like, you have to 
like you know bring it back to reality and back to like it's you still have a family at home that needs you and you still have you know a business and all this stuff that like Daniel is again it, at odds with what he it, with his ability to balance ironically mm -hmm. um, but I, I don't know I just love like Amanda's whole she doesn't just give in. It's not like a, another show where it's like, okay, well, like, we'll throw in the wife being angry for, like, two minutes, but then, like, you know, she gets over it. Like, I feel like Courtney just, like, took Amanda, and she's just so genuine and, and honest, and she's, like, not being mean about it. She's not being awful to Daniel. She's just, like, I'm honestly really hurt, and you're going to have to do more than get me sushi to make it right. <laughs> I love the comparison of her and Mr. Miyagi. Yeah. That is so, and I never I never heard yeah. that before, and yeah. that is so what it is. She's his compass. She is his yeah. compass. Yes, yeah. Yeah. yeah, she has to keep him yep. in line. So, all right, guys, that's going to wrap us up for episode eight. We'll be back uh, soon with episode nine. There's some awesome stuff happening there. If you want to follow along with us, you can find Mr. Michael Quest. At the only MC on Instagram and on Twitter. And you can find me on Twitter at Tammy Govea, Insta Tammy Govea Official. You can find me uh, on Twitter and Instagram at it's me, Veronica underscore V. <laughs> Mary, where can the folks find you? Uh, I'm on Instagram mostly at Miss Mary M. Mauser, and then I have a Twitter as well, which is Mary M. Mauser. Awesome. You guys can find me at Ben Bateman Media. We'll see you soon. Our founder, Kevin Undergaro, and me, Maria Menunos, would like to thank you for tuning in to AfterBuzz TV. Remember, we're not just the first, we're the biggest in the world, and we're the only destination for all your favorite TV shows. Whatever you crave, we've got it. So go to AfterBuzzTV.com and check out our lineup. Buzz you later. <laughs> the views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.